So my mentor, Mike Austin, not only was he a long drive pioneer and Guinness record holder for the longest drive ever struck in a round of professional golf, but he was also a legendary teacher too. And what Mike Austin believes strongly is that we could all make our golf swings a lot better if we simply had the right mental imagery. So right after this, I'm gonna share with you a couple of great new images that I've come up with that I think are gonna help you get a little more distance out of your drives. So stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, longer and straighter all the way to the green. If you're on a similar journey to that, by all means, join me. Hit the subscribe button, like this video at the end if you liked it. Leave a comment down below. So back when Jack Nicholas was in his heyday, let's say in the, in the 60s, throughout the mid 70s, he was known as being pretty much the longest hitter out there in the persimmon, a lot of ball steel shaft days. When he really wanted to step on one, people say he could fly the ball almost 300 yards with that equipment. That'd probably be the equivalent of flying a ball 340 or 350 today. So he was an incredibly strong swinger. One thing he was very famous for it was known as the Nicholas Stomp, or the way that he would lift this front heel off the ground quite aggressively, especially early in his career. And then he would really change directions and stomp that thing back into the ground. So I really like that using that term as a mental image. Uh, it's kind of what they call it, onomatopoeia, where the word sounds like the action. Now in order to use this move uh, the most efficiently, you're going to have to get the left foot, especially the left heel, unweighted in the backswing. So if you're not doing that, you're not going to be able to stomp unless this foot gets unweighted so that it could not only lift. So what we're looking for is a plantar flexion like this. And that flexes the knee out kind of towards the ball. You're looking for about an inch or two of that motion, just like that. And then you're looking for an in-roll of the ankle at the same time, like this. You can practice them individually, and together they'll give you what was kind of the classic knee position back in those days, where the left knee is starting to kind of wind towards the right to the middle of the stance. You see I've lifted the heel, and I've rolled onto the inside of the left foot, where now, except for about maybe 15 or 20 pounds of my body weight, I've pretty much unweighted this foot and loaded all the weight in, into the right foot. I've also moved body mass behind the ball by kicking this thigh behind it. So you see a lot of my mass now is wound up behind the ball. Now once you've achieved this position at the top of the swing and you've nicely got this unweighted and you're loaded up on the right side, what you'll do is you'll simply step down onto the left heel. It's got to be the left heel that you're sending all the weight down into the ground with. And so what I'm asking you to do here, or at least give it a shot, once you've unweighted this, is step down aggressively. Step down aggressively. Try to really stomp. It's a great word, stomp. I want you to put your heel into the ground hard to trigger your downswing. So the second piece of mental imagery I'd like you to remember or give this a shot to after you've done the stomp is you're going to do a swoosh. So what perfect item. I've got the speed whoosh here um, to make a swooshing sound. I really like this tool because it's quite apparent when you have accelerated the hands to a high speed, you can really hear a very high pitched swoosh. There's no holding on there. I am just trying to whip the club head through, intending on making the loudest swoosh about 30 inches out in front of the ball. For you to get the fastest possible speed, not only will you need to keep kind of a supple uh, spaghetti-like quality to your arms and wrists, but you can't have your hands on the steering wheel and try to be under control. A good fast swing that hitting the ball far 
is going to feel reckless to a lot of you watching this. If you're going to try this for the first time, it'll feel like you're driving your car or doing anything, skiing downhill faster than you've ever done before. It'll feel a little bit out of control to you. Don't let that scare you. Uh, to learn and get better, you always have to, to journey into the land of the uncomfortable. Keep at it until it does become more comfortable. So let's take a look at this stick. The stomp and the push together. So it's stomp, push in that order. Okay, here we go. Unweight, stomp, swoosh. One more time. I will unweight. Get the knee to the middle, get the foot um, inwards like this, like Nicholas did. Get a nice big backswing, stomp, and swoosh. Here we go. Unweight. Weight. Okay, now let me give it a shot with my real driver and a golf ball in the way. We'll take a look at it again in slow-mo right after this, so you can see how it breaks down where the sequence has to be preserved. It has to be stomp, then swoosh. And you're intending on making your swoosh the loudest out in front of the ball, so that you're always accelerating into contact. So let's, let me give it a try. Boy, that ball was absolutely smashed. I could really feel that I was accentuating. Boom, boom, and that really triggered my hips and my torso to clear around to face the target. It just felt a little extra faster, made my hands feel faster, and then when I added the swoosh, it felt like it was just multiplying all that speed of the torso turning. It just felt like an exponential speed out at the end, whipping that thing around. Always intending on putting it out in front of the ball. So looking at that slow-mo, you could quite clearly see that the first action in my downswing was to stomp or go from an unweighted boom, not onto the instep, because that would lead to a early extension. If you step down into the instep, not only that, but you won't have as good a balance. Without balance, as you step down into the heel, you will never achieve your maximum speed. You've got to have a very balanced base to create force from. Right, I'm going to go back to work. This mental imagery is feeling like it's picking me up a couple more miles an hour of club speed. Um, hopefully it will for you too. Um, if it does, would you please come back, leave a comment down below. Tell us how you did, how this affected your swing. And hey, as always, thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moorpark, California. It's a wonderful place to practice, beautiful scenery. Love to have you come out and join me. Hit a bucket of balls out here sometime. And thanks again for watching my channel. And as usual, hey, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take care.